Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. We're bringing back a guest that we had early on in the early days of the show. It is Todd Heitkamp. Todd is a uh, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and he is also the owner of Dakota Angler. Todd, thanks for joining the show. Not a problem, Chris. Thanks for having me back. Todd, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, I gave you a little bit of an introduction there, but tell us kind of who you are and what you do. Sure. I'm a, you know, I'm a native of Southwest Minnesota. I grew up uh, in Adrian, which is in Southwest Minnesota, as I mentioned, and uh, went to school for uh, meteorology at the University of Wisconsin. And I am now in my 33rd year uh, working for the National Weather Service. Uh, I also owned, uh, own Dakota Angler, as you mentioned. Uh, I opened that store 19 years ago here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and uh, it's been great ever since. Dad, we wanted to have you on today to talk about how weather can affect fishing, but Really, I think this is a conversation about barometric pressure. What is barometric pressure? Just kind of give us a definition of what it is and how it works. Well, you know, barometric pressure is really the, what drives weather, uh, quite honestly, but it's the measurement of the weight of the atmosphere upon your shoulders. Uh, it's the air actually pushing down on everyone's shoulders uh, across the, in the entire globe. Uh, it's one thing that, you know, if you haven't, Maybe you're starting to feel it, Chris. I know I am, but my, I can remember when I was younger, my grandfather, we used to say that, uh, you know, the joints would start to ache whenever the weather was changing. That's all related to barometric pressure and, uh, and the weight and the changes of the, that pressure uh, will determine how a person feels uh, as well as uh, how, uh, you know, the bite is out on the area lake. So it is all related. It really determines uh, the strength of the wind. And that's where a lot of people think that uh, wind forecasting is uh, really a true measurement of your success out on the body of uh, water, but it's really uh, related to uh, barometric pressure, which then also drives the wind. And you talked about your grandfather. My dad used to say that the cows are all laying down when a storm is coming. <laughs> Animals feel those changes in barometric pressure better than we can. Well, I think uh, they're more in tune to it. Yeah. I mean, they don't have, uh, you know, obviously they're not in tune as far as our, our, their eyesight. And our, for us, you know, honestly, our eyes are our best tool that we have when it comes to weather. Uh, but a lot of times our, our eyes deceive us. They don't, we don't uh, necessarily look for that stuff. Uh, I can tell you this much. There's a lot of times people are out in the boat uh, fishing and when, and they see the storm coming in and they choose to ignore it. So, uh, the eyes aren't the best thing, but yeah, the animals are definitely in tune to that. Uh, that's why a lot of times if you have an outdoor dog, uh, or uh, some type of pet that they, you know, obviously will all, as a storm is approaching, they will go, uh, someplace to shelter themselves. They don't know, they don't, they don't hear the sirens going off or anything like that. Uh, but they're in tune to the weather and they can sense those changes most definitely. How does changing barometric pressure affect fishing and, and why does it affect fishing? Well, you know, that's the whole key is uh, a lot of times, especially during ice season, uh, you'll notice this more than anything else because a lot of people are watching their electronics a little bit more and how those fish are reacting to your presentation. But when it comes to barometric pressure, and that, again, as I mentioned, that, that's the measurement of the weight of uh, the air above you. And so when the pressure is the highest, the, the air is the heaviest at that point in time. And so when you're talking about ice fishing, that, uh, that impact or the effect is amplified that much more because that the ice it takes up more water volume. And so when the pressure changes, that causes a, the ch change in the fish. In other words, their air bladder, what they use to help keep them buoyant. Uh, and so when the air pressure changes, their body uh, metabolism and everything else has to change with it. Their air bladder will expand and as it expands it takes up more room in their body, uh, makes them feel full and they will actually fall to the bottom or hug the bottom until that pressure that uh, starts to equalize or actually begins to fall and then they'll move around a lot. And you, People will see that on their electronics. If they're watching their electronics uh, they will, will see the fish come up to your bait and then they'll go right back down. Uh, again, they're, they're curious, but they're not hungry because they're full. And that's mainly due to the influence that uh, high pressure has on them. And high pressure is usually indicated by very light winds uh, and uh, clear crystal blue, uh, blue sky. And that's when a lot of people want to go out because the weather is the best for fishing as far as the fishermen are concerned, but not necessarily for the fish themselves. So you see that happen to kind of the fish that we're targeting. How does that barometric pressure change? How does that affect the fish that the fish we're targeting are trying to eat? The well, you know, 
Yeah, I think what we have to do is really take a look at, uh, you know, obviously when the pressure is the highest, it's the bite is the, usually the toughest. Uh, when the pressure is the lowest, uh, you don't have to go looking for the fish. You have to, they'll actually come to you. Uh, so when the pressure is highest, I call it kind of like kamikaze fishing or uh, what tr Tony Roach is so, uh, uh, you know, appropriately called uh, ice trolling. That all, what you're doing is you're going out looking for those active fish. Uh, you're going to find fish, and you may ent you know, uh, entice one or two of them to bite, but you want to find those active fish. And so what you need to really do is you need to go out uh, you know, drill a number of holes and find those uh, active fish. And typically, they're a little bit smaller uh, than what you would normally see. Uh, but still, at the same time, they're the active ones, and those are the ones that you want to pursue. Why does barometric ch pressure change? What causes it to, to go up and down? Well, that's basically what drives weather. Uh, and, you know, what I always say is that uh, if you took a bottle of water and uh, let's say you filled it halfway full and you turn that bottle of water sideways, upside down, whatever way, whatever direction you want to turn it, the volume of water or the amount of water in that bo bottle doesn't change. It stays the same. And so think of the atmosphere as that water in that bottle. Uh, the atmosphere, the amount of air does not change around the globe at a given time, but it may fluctuate. It may have a little bit of valley, uh, a valley and, and let's say over the central U.S. where there's a ridge or a mountain of high pressure over the, central, uh, over the eastern uh, part of the United States. So it, it just changes a little bit, but it ne the amount of volume doesn't ever, uh, the amount of water never ever changes. So it really what it comes down to is that when when low pressure pulls out of, the, uh, of an area, high pressure builds into it. Uh, so it's just replacing that gap. It's filling the gap that is left or filling that void that is left after low pressure or high pressure moves out of the area. So when we think of when a lot of, I guess, the, the uh, laymen, when they think of pressure, they think of storms, storms moving in, storms moving out. But is there anything else that really people can kind of detect a change and barometric pressure is there anything else they can use to do that yes most definitely and that's the wind uh the wind is really uh you know the indication indicator to most everyone uh, what the pressure is actually doing if there's any type of direct wind direction out of the south meaning the south wind southwest southeast uh, usually the pressure is falling at that point in time usually again at that point in time the the fish will be on the prowl they'll come to you you don't necessarily have to do the trolling you can you know drill a hole or set up anywhere you want to and the fish will usually come to you uh, but when that wind switches around to the west or northwest all of a sudden at that point in time the pressure begins to rise and that's when all of a sudden now you're going to have to change your presentation a little bit but usually the pressure is the highest the day after the front passes. So the fishing becomes the toughest 24 hours after that frontal passage. So, uh, you know, if a front passes through the area, in other words, the wind switches around to the Northwest uh, this afternoon, uh, then tomorrow will be the toughest day of fishing because that's when the pressure will be the highest. What can anglers do to kind of take these, take the weather report, take what's happening and build a game plan? How, how do they go about doing that? You know, that's the whole thing. People will sit there and say, well, you know, is there a certain value that, of pressure that I need to really look at? No, it, what it is, it's the trend. What is the pressure doing? Is it falling? Is it rising? And you can't just say, well, the pressure's rising today. I'm not going out fishing. Obviously, we go out fishing when we can. And so, as you mentioned, Chris, it, we need to put that uh, little bit of knowledge in our toolbox. So, if we notice that all of a sudden the wind is switching around to the northwest, the pressure is rising, uh, again, then we need to change our game plan up a little bit. Maybe we need to start uh, looking for those active fish, as I mentioned earlier. Um, downsize our baits a little bit more. Uh, maybe change it up from live bait to plastics or, or plastics to live bait. You need to be willing to change that presentation up far more often than you otherwise would. And again, you can't just be sedentary. You need to be moving around looking for those fish at all times. And you're not going to be able to stay in one spot. You're going to be able to find those fish for a period of time fish them and you know get what you can out of there and then move to the next spot at that point in time. Are there any other weather factors that anglers should be looking at when they're kind of putting together their plan and how they're going to fish? What other weather factors besides barometric pressure are important? Well I think the other thing is and, and, and bar barometric pressure is what I've done a number of studies on uh, for the number of years working with uh, various you know professional anglers so that is the number one factor that influences a person's success out on the ice or on a uh, open body of water uh, but the other thing is that people need to remember uh, also when it comes to uh, just staying safe uh, when it comes you know when they're talking about wind chill during the winter time or heat stroke in the summertime or even storms in the summertime or winter time 
all those things come into play to know what the forecast is before you actually venture out on the ice or hit the water uh, with your boat. You need to know what you need, uh, how you can better protect yourself and prepare for the influence that Mother Nature is going to have on your success and on your safety when you're out on that body of water. Is there anything about uh, how weather affects fishing that I didn't ask you about that you think is important, Tom? No, I think, you know, the, there's things that people have obviously have felt and, and, and experienced many times when they're out on the ice or uh, on the body of water that they are, that, you know, the old saying, the fish bite best right before the storm. Very appropriate because that's when the, the pressure is the lowest right before the storm. Uh, I mean, you can go out there and uh, people will push the limits to the last possible moment before the storm hits and the fish, because the fish are biting, they had, had a fantastic day. So they'll pull the boat off or they'll, you know, come off the body of water and they'll go back out there after the storm passes and they won't catch a thing. And they go, what, what happened? The you know, same spot the fish were here before and now why, why aren't they there? Well, because the pressure changed, the winds switch around to the northwest. Uh, so those are all things that we have witnessed before uh, and experienced. And we just need to now not necessarily say that the weather is the key to your success, but is a very vital thing uh, that you can't control. We have, uh, there, you know, it's, the fishing industry has come a long ways uh, through the recent years with uh, technology and baits and everything else. But the one thing that you cannot control is the weather and the influences that it has. So it's up to us to understand what those influences are. Now, if people want to know more about you and Dakota Angler, how do they find you? Well, they can check us out on the web at dakotaangler.com or they can give us a call at 605-336-9132. Plus, uh, we're on social media. We have a Facebook page, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, Twitter, you name it. Whatever we, Whatever's out there, we got it. I like watching the, uh, the fishing reports you have on, on Facebook. Those are really good. Well, I appreciate that. And that's one thing that has gotten a lot of attention. Uh, the past couple of weeks, I've talked more about weather uh, on there and also the, the trouble that we have in forecasting wind. Uh, but well, you try to throw a little bit of nuggets of information out there so that uh, maybe we can you know, help uh, people learn a few things as we're going along as well. Awesome. Todd Heinkamp, thanks for joining the show. Really appreciate it. Not a problem, Chris. Thanks for having me.